Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and a new video. So mainly going to be concentrating on shrimp and the shrimp room but we'll do a little bit of a tour of everything else we do. I want to start the video with just a few bits of sort of daily activities and what I do uh, around 10 o'clock every day in the or around 10 o'clock in the day in the shrimp room and we'll start off that with with the spiders we'll go through what we do with the frogs and then we'll go through feeding the shrimp going through the various different types of shrimp i keep at the moment and updates in the room so over the christmas period i've done a bit of work in the room and we're, we're really getting towards final completion of the room i know we did a set of videos about sort of building the shrimp room but there's always things to do and i am nearly coming to the end of that so we're very 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 close to finishing so with all that being said and done let's get straight to the video let's start with the spiders then so at the moment we've got three spiders in these micro enclosures i am going to change those to slightly bit well a fair bit bigger i think they're um 10 by 10 by 15s are the enclosures that I'm going to do. And what I'll do is I'll put some little plastic plants and stuff in there and make them more of a little miniscape. I have had to do a little bit of work on these. So as you can see, the Bahamas is slightly off. Uh, I should have pushed that back. But what I've done temporarily is I've put a heat mat in here because they were sitting at around 20 to 21, which is a bit cool for jumping spiders. And I've literally just got an old style temperature gauge in one of them and they'll all be at the same sort of sort of temperature um, they are sitting around 25 26 degrees which is which is what you want the room sits around 22 23 so it's just a little bit too cool for those and part of my daily routine is i check on the spiders and then i give them a little spritz so if i just put this on a stand we'll go through that process i do have lighting on there so I've got lighting up there as well. I've got them in a turned over tank at the moment, just somewhere to put the tank, to be honest. But let's get the lights on. So if we switch the light on, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on for 12 hours. So the timers are... Um, that's, I only want one of them, that one. So that's the lights on, and you can see that they've got daylight. So they are a, a diurnal species, I believe. But let's get this on the stand, and I'll show you what I do with spritzing and stuff. Literally all we do then each day, obviously I do feed as well, is we check on them. So if we look at the the Regis, she's quite fat on the abdomen, but she has built quite a heavy nest, which suggests to me that she's going into molt. And on the basis that her belly's fat, her abdomen's fat, and it looks like she's going into molt, I probably won't feed her. And all we're going to do, see if we can get this into shot a little bit better. All we're going to do is just open up the enclosure. She may sort of jump around a little bit and then using a little spray bottle, just give it a little spritz up the side. If it's, I'll see humidity in these throughout the day so that the little enclosures get humid and then we'll just close that up. And I'll do the same with Luton, so I'm pushing these back onto that mat. I think what I'm going to do is make a shelf for these guys, and within that shelf, I'll put a heat pad at the back, probably a longer, thin one. I don't want to get that yet until I've bought the bigger enclosures because those will sort of be their their lifetime enclosures, and we'll do the same with Luton. So just check on him. So he's out and about. Uh, I have got a small cricket in there, but he doesn't seem to want to eat that. So I'm probably going to take that out at some point today. Let's bring him into view, actually. So I'm probably going to take that out at some point today and wait for my flies to hatch. So I have got some green bottle flies that are sort of on the hatch. Now, in May, if really hungry, take that cricket, or I might try and put a smaller one in. So it's not big, but it's not small either and uh, it may escape while we're doing this but let's uh, let's just open him up as well so his enclosure does have some moss in and i give that moss a little spritz and it is just a little spritz 
and what it does it puts spots on the wall and it allows them then to get a drink if they want a drink and they'll drink from the spots on the wall and they won't go through the hassle of repeating that on the on the third one but you sort of get the idea and now that we've actually pushed this back onto the heat mat if I show you that temperature gauge again if I can bring that into view if I show you that temp that started to climb now so they do sit about 26 25 and a half 26 degrees and once I'm sort of confident that that's over a period of time I'll, I'll probably take the little temperature gauge out what I may do is when I put them into bigger enclosures I may actually go and get um, some little micro thermometers um, I don't know it depends on the size of them but if I can get high gram you know small very small hygrometers and thermometers combined I'll put those in the enclosures but the enclosures are only going to be sort of 10 centimeters square and 15 to 20 centimeters tall so you're probably not going to find anything that small a thermometer maybe um, and we'll, we'll just to keep an eye on that and I probably I like min max stuff so you can see what they drop to and what they rise to the next step then would be the frogs so we have three of them sat out one there apologies for the reflection one there and one over there i have put a new water dish in here and my plants are starting to spread and form sort of a smallish carpet likewise over there i've put another hygrometer in there for humidity because i don't think the electronic one's working well or it's failed i do want to move that bromeliad as well but what i normally do with these in the morning then is once the lights come on or as the lights come on i spray those and there are two of them but i haven't got frogs in one of those yet so what i'm using at the moment is just a pump up sprayer and we'll give that a couple of pumps open one of the doors frogs will jump out of the way and literally just give that a spray down don't have to soak it just to keep the humidity up and that's probably it so that will be that part I'll do the same on the other tank or the other terrarium should I say and the reason I'm spraying this I'm spraying these down is simply because yes I want to keep the humidity up but there are custodians in here so we can probably see there I can't get there just crawling off now so we do have some speckled isopods in there and springtails so I want to give them a bit of moisture and if I so you can see the the spring tails but the isopods are sort of they are burrowing species so it's uh, there's one there actually so it's just to keep them sort of up and up and running and then talking of spiders then what I've got here are some green bottle casters so I'll put them in a bit of sawdust a bit of humidity to that to try and help them to hatch they've been in the room a few days and they should they should pick up and hatch and what I'll do is I'll try the the black spider so the male I'll try that on uh, a fly to try and get that going the lights have just come on and you'll notice something different on these racks so once a week what i'll also do is i'll pull out each of the tubs sometimes more than once a week so each of the isopod tubs i'll feed and i'll mist so the bigger tubs once a week the smaller tubs twice a week and as you probably can see from from here i've changed the way the tanks work so i don't know why this is dropping um i am going to order i've done these with magnets actually so i'll just talk about what this is and then we'll we'll go through that but 
what I've used is I've used something called Pro, I think it's called Proplex, and it's literally just a plastic sheet. It's what I use to put behind the walls, so it's this sort of stuff. It's two mil thick, and what I've done on these racks is I've bought some magnets, and they're just sort of standard standard magnets. They're not holding as well as I'd like them to, so I'm going to buy some neodymium or neodymium magnets and use those because they're much stronger. But literally all these these do is they they hold in place. And if I just slot that over there a second, try and do this with one hand, guys, so apologies. They literally just cover, and I need to work something on the top. Because these shelves sit flush into the cross beam i can't really do anything other than magnets on those and this one's dropped a bit as well so i need to work out a better way of sort of holding that on, on the top part more than anything the big rack then i've completely encased and at the moment what i've used is i've just used push pins so panel pins for cord boards and stuff and, and because the shelves sit above on these. I've actually pushed those pins into the wood. Now what I'm going to do is get some black flat pins and sort of tack those in just so it looks flush, but still use the magnets to sort of hold these down and I've had to cut bits out for the, the airline and stuff. I still need to finish this, so I still need to sort of get that across. But if we have a look at that, how much better does that look? everything encased in i'm in the process of painting the sides of the racks as well just with a, a water-based acrylic paint probably need a couple of coats just so it sort of blacks all those in and i'll do the same on this rack as well so the idea of these is they're pretty easy to take off so if we work on the top one as an example just slide the magnet down magnet up there actually and then it is literally we can fold these so it is literally just a case of sort of lifting those up on the fold I, I think they'll crack eventually over time but lift those up on the fold and then when you're done just drop the magnets back on oh drop one I keep losing them <laughs> So I do want a bit of a stronger magnet, uh, hence me probably going for the neody neodymium magnets. So let's get this on a stand and we'll go through and we'll, we'll, we'll feed everything. And at the moment, my food of choice, should I be able to find it, is Kabardi, Ebi, Spirulina, Shrimp Pellet. And if I open this up for you, try and do this with one hand. I'm quite a fan of this. We do sell it. So it's there, comes in a nice little tin. And if I show you my tin, once I can get the lid off. As you can see, I get a fair bit of use out of this. Now I opened this tin because it was dented and uh, I couldn't really sell that dented tin. So let's get this on the stand and we'll, we'll get a feed going and we'll go through the shrimp. So if you remember when I encased all of these tanks in, I've done each of them so that there's a corner that I can literally just slip away with these lid holders and feed. So let's get feeding. If we start on the big rack and the bottom left tank then, so this is my mixed tank, quite a few shrimp in here. I've got a little albino plec, plec in here that I've had for years, somebody gave it me really tiny, about one centimetre. 
and I'd got nowhere to really put it, so I put it in here. It does, it does barge the shrimp out of the way a bit, but they still get on it. They don't, you know, it doesn't bother them too much. But I'm thinking now that I've encased all of these in the black cover, I think the reflection is a lot less, and it's loads better to get video. So, so job done. That that was something I was really keen to do, and and it seems to have worked. Worked. Moving over to the next tank then. So these are my mixed galaxies. Um, they do drop some reds every now and then, but I separate those out. There are some really nice shrimp in here, and I'm in the process of cycling a couple of tanks. I do want to start separating and doing a breeding program for these and selecting the right males and females. But say there are some really nice shrimp in here, and as you can see, they're uh, they're going for it and they're breeding well as, as well, you know. But uh, I need to sort of filter through them and get the grades out that I want. Next to that, and these are doing really well, and in the same way, I need to sort of separate some of these out and get some of the better quality ones out. So there are some really white, these are fancy tigers, sort of medium to high grade fancy tigers. And there are some with sort of really intense whites on that probably need separating out. I think they're called queen tigers. So these, these need a, a, a good good going through as well. Now these grow really big for some reason. These are probably the biggest shrimp I've got apart from a Mano's. In the last tank then, we've just got some pure black lions. There are only a few in here. I think this one's about to molt. It seems to have lost a bit of colour. I do... I do feed with sort of white supplements and stuff, which sort of helps to, to maintain the white, and for whatever reason, that one's gone quite dull. And I get the same with my PRL, actually. So these are PBL. And there's about 10 in there. I haven't bred yet. I may slightly increase the general hardness. So they're on about four to five at the moment. I might lift that up to five to six to see if that makes a difference. Moving up onto the rack, rack above or the row above then, so we've got uh, pure red lines, and when I first had these, these bred really well, and for whatever reason, they've stopped and slowed down. So I need to, again, I'm going to have a play around with general hardness with these and see if I can get these to, to, to go again. It may just be seasonal. It may be a temperature thing, you know, come spring, they'll, they'll, they'll sort of go for it. Then we've got a uh, spotted pintos. So I've lost a few of these. I can, I can see a dead one in there now I need to remove. But uh, I've lost a few of these. And again, these were breeding really, really well. And they just stopped. So potentially it could be um, a, a sort of winter thing, a temperature thing. And my temps aren't great in here at the moment. There are about 19 on this, on this rack. I don't really want to warm the room any more than that. And I'm happy to sort of just have a lull in the winter if we need to. Moving over. So the next tank, I've got my my blue bolts, blue steels. There's some nice shrimp in here that could do with separating out and going for more of a deep blue or a crazy blue, or take some of the some of the bolts out and sort of work with work with what we've got. But uh, again, these are sort of breeding. So my my plan was I wanted to get the colony up. So once the colony was up and growing and doing well, then I'd sort of have plenty to play with and work from. In this tank, we've got... Uh, so these were really difficult to see before. So we've got our orange eye. I can see a tiger in there, actually. In fact, I can see a few. So these need these need sorting out. So I, what I've done, I'd... I'd I was down to a couple of these orange eye blue tigers and I separated them out into the tiger tank to do to try and sort of crossbreed and see what we could get and it looks like I've put a buried mama in there that's crossed with the tiger so we've ended up with these tiger offspring that I do need to separate and put out in the tank above moving up and I can actually see them now, which is nice. So that, that'll be a job for today. The ones that are tigers and, and the more tiger type, I'm going to separate those out and bring them upstairs. So moving up then, we've got a tiger tank. 
And as I mentioned, these were originally red tigers. And what I did was I crossed them with orange eye blue. So we've now got mixed tigers, sort of, sorry for the shake hands. Um, we've got reds in there, we've got wilds in there. And these are doing quite well. They're on a slightly different soil, so they're on a soil that gives a pH of 6 to 6.5. Six, then these are really hard to, to get on camera, but we've got our dragon bloods. So there was about 13, 14 of these, and I've not seen any babies, but I've seen buried mamas. So there's, they are about they're all over the back and up in the Hornworths as well. Then moving over, we've got loads of snails, which I need to try and have a get out. I've put up loads out, to be fair. And uh, the moss has died off for some reason, so that's coming out today. Tangerine tigers. And these are doing really well. And there's, as you can see, there are babies in there as well. So these, these, this colony was sort of really down. I had a big problem with this colony and it picked back up. And then I've seen babies in here as well. So I'm trying to work out if those are babies from camera. But we do have babies in here. So these are orange eye red devils. And what I want to try and concentrate on these is you see the ones with a really dark black. I want to be able to separate some of those out with the dark, the very dark backs and try and sort of breed a line from there. But again, there were only, I think I had 10 of those, lost one. And we've now got a few babies. So there's one coming. There's definitely one there. But I think there are more. I think these are babies here, but I can't see through camera. Let's see if I can zoom in. So yeah, those are definitely babies. I'm not sure if that is, but that is. And that's one that's growing. So those seem to be doing well. And then moving over onto the other rack. I might get some reflection here because of the light on the top. Moving over onto the other rack. And these are all plumbed in now as well, by the way. So we've got this rack plumbed in and that rack plumbed in. And the, the plumbing on here does the top two, the bottom two, and these two. Because these are neos, I'll come to those. Oh, sorry, these are uh, Caradina. And what we've got in the top tank here, so you might get reflection here, is I've separated out my red galaxies. And these are breeding. I've seen a few little small babies in there. Excuse the glass, this needs cleaning. But these are bloodshots. And along with the tangerine tigers, I had a massive problem with my bloodshot Caradina as well. At the same time, lost loads of them, but as you can see, they've they've recovered well. So I think it was bacterial, not 100%. I think it was bacterial. I don't mind losing the odd one. It's when you're losing lots at the same time. Moving down then, we've got... I need to do water change on these. We've got our orange neocaridina. And then in this tank, we've got our fire reds. There's snails in all of these, and we've also got some Amano shrimp in there. There's about 10, I think, left. Moving down onto the bottom shelf, these are my mixed low to medium fancy tigers, and there are some black in there as well. And then finally, moving over to the last tank that we've got shrimp in at the moment, and we do have babies in here as well, but we've got our pure white line. And again, these sort of went really low. They, those guys went really low in numbers and they seem to be picking back up. <coughs> Moving on to the last rack then. I've currently got two tanks cycling. <coughs> Excuse me. Those will be for Caradina. They're not lit yet, um, but they are wired. So I need to find a plug to plug it into this this plug here that's set on timer so that's lighting i haven't done anything with the middle rack yet i do have two low boys for that and i think if i go with the low boys i'm probably going to increase my neo caradina holding 
I'm probably going to go for some blues and yellows or blues and greens if I can find some of, of decent quality. I'm tempted to have it for just isopods and sort of extend the isopod range. I may bring everything up off that bottom shelf and put it onto here in these tubs. So I do have some tubs here. They've got nothing in them at the moment, but I'm not 100% certain if that's that's where I'm going to go. As always, those of you that watch the channel know that I, I, I sort of make decisions as and when I make decisions or I've got ideas. And looking at that bottom shelf, that bottom shelf is heated. So we keep that at around 21 degrees just to make sure it is because the floor's cold. I'm tempted to put some flooring or some rugs in here waterproof rugs just to try and sort of take the cold of the concrete away a little bit and try and sort of insulate the floor a touch i wish i'd have done it before we, we, we finished the room but we haven't and then we're in a bit of a mess here as you can see up this end but uh, frogs are doing well i'll feed those shortly they were fed two days ago and I've cut down on the feeding because they were getting quite fat. The frogs that I wanted for this tank are sold out. But I'm in no rush. I'm going to wait for this to fully establish. I've put some moss up in the top. And I want the moulds and the funguses to sort of come and go. And I want the custodians in there. The spring tiles and the isopods to sort of deal with everything that's in there. Before I, before I consider putting frogs in. I am tempted to put something in this side, maybe a piece of driftwood, I'm not sure yet. Just something for the, the frogs to perch on, and I do need to sort all the lighting and the heating out properly for those as well. And then as I mentioned sort of at the start of the video, we've, we've sort of turned the tank on its side. Uh, I've got bits of stuff everywhere guys, so excuse the mess. We've turned the tank on its side, um, we've got this light in here. This is what I'm eventually going to use for sort of unboxing videos with the lights, give me better lighting. And I've got the lights off in the room, hence we got really good video of the of the shrimp. I'm possibly getting some more shrimp, but I'm just waiting on a friend to sort of let me know what, when, where and why. Um, hence me rushing to get these two tanks set up. Now they are, for all intents and purposes, cycled because... The UGF boxes that I've used were in other tanks cycling that are already cycled. So these are cycled UGF boxes. So theoretically, I can go with those straight away. I'll try and get the lights on today. And I need to create a cover for that as well. But once I've got the lights on and we start to get a bit of algae, then these are good to go really. They're, they're not aged, but they are cycled. And I say I'm waiting for somebody to give me the nod and uh, potentially we've got some different types of shrimp coming for in there so we'll have to wait and see but uh, I think I think blocking the out. obviously we haven't got anything covered over that light but I may have an idea for that as well put a canopy over that is that how much better is that from a video perspective with the lights off in the room there's no reflection back you know really really works for me that does last thing for the day apart from i'm going to go and make another fly culture is i'm going to go and feed these these few flies to the, the frogs so i have got some bits of wood here from the from the culture but what I will do is, see they are a bit hungry. What I will do is one here, look. But we'll see if we can get a bit of it. I don't want them to jump out. And they might not go for it while the door's open, but let's have a look. Just talking about that water dish that I mentioned earlier. So they don't need water. The reason I put a water dish in is simply so that they can 
they can, if they if the humidity drops, they can go and get moisture. He's about to go. I don't know if they'll feed because I'm here. Pretty much guarantee if I shut one of the doors, they will. But I might have to shut both. That's, um, I think they wait for the click. Here we go. So one super brave. But they will come down eventually and have a bit of a feed. So I'm a bit keen to take that bit of wood out, but I'll pull that out and we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get a bit more video. If not, so I'll, I'll sort of end that bit there. So that brings us to the end of this week's video. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you're not already a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and like button. Leave as many comments as you want. I do respond to them. It's This video is due to go out on New Year's Eve 2023. So what I'd like to do as the sort of final part of this video is thank everybody who's a subscriber. Really appreciate the support. Hope you all have a fantastic New Year. Don't get too drunk and wishing an absolutely fantastic 2024. So thanks everybody who subscribes. Thanks everybody who watches. Hope you appreciate the content more things to come hit that notification bell and we'll get we'll get some videos done thanks everybody take care enjoy